but this is one that I dearly, dearly love because I think it makes some of the biggest difference. But I think what's been missing from the leadership conversation is the topic of process. For a team to be successful, for a leader to be successful, they've got to have a process, and their team does too, because it's the process that leads you to success. You see, in business, you create the systems for the business, and you train the people for the systems. You can have the most talented people on your team, but if you don't give them a process to use, then they won't be successful. Welcome back to Increase. I'm Blake Anderson. Episode 59. Thrilled to be with you for all of these episodes. Get to talk about a subject, topic that I absolutely love. Topic within a topic. We're back in organizational leadership framework for step number four, which we call the process. Every step starts with a P. This is the seven P's of organizational leadership. And this is step number four, the process. Now, if you haven't if you haven't listened to steps one, two, or three, go back and check them out because this one is predicated on you understanding the first three. But this is one that I dearly, dearly love because I think it makes some of the biggest difference. And I think it's it's what's often missing in the leadership conversation these days. Lots of wonderful books on leadership about how to interact with people, how to lead people, and I think that's super important. We're going to get to that. We've been talking about that. But I think what's been missing from the leadership conversation is the topic of process. Oftentimes, we're talking about leadership and we don't want to pin it on a certain type of business or an industry. But the route is for a team to be successful, for a leader to be successful, they've got to have a process and their team does too. Because it's the process that leads you to success. You see, in business... You create the systems for the business, and then you cre- and you train the people for the systems. You can have the most talented people on your team, but if you don't give them a process to use, then they won't be successful. See, I was on a team years ago. I got invited in to help with a particular part of the team. And I was so thrilled because I believed in the mission of what they were doing. I was uh, friends with the director. I knew some people that were already on the team. I thought a lot of, of them. I was impressed by them personally and the work that I knew that they were capable of. But when I got on the team, I was shocked to find out that they weren't successful. What we didn't know from the outside looking in is that they were always missing deadlines. They didn't work together well. But what, what seemed to amaze me was these were talented people who I was impressed by and I liked when I met them. And so before I could get going and started on the thing that I was hired to help the organization with, I met with all of the team members and I realized they had a mess on their hands. They had a dumpster fire where, because no one was working together. It's such a hard thing to understand. And I told the director, well, we can't really move forward with this thing you want me to work on until we get everybody working together on the same team. You see, what I found out is the reason they couldn't hit their deadlines, the reason these talented people were underperforming, wasn't because they lacked discipline. It wasn't because they lacked determination. It wasn't because they uh, didn't believe in the mission of the organization. You see, they had the first three steps just fine. They knew what success would look like when they got there. They all subscribed to the same principles and values for the most part. Everyone was rightfully in their place. They had a specialization for why they were in uh, on the team and how they were trying to help. But the problem was they had no process. You see, the director had brought them in assuming that these talented people would just know what to do. And that's, I just said, get out of their way. Well, there's a time and a place to empower your people to do what they do best. But leaders, if you don't give your team a process, then there's no way that they can be successful. And that's why it's step four of the organizational leadership framework, not step five, six, or seven. Process. Because, you know, here Henry Ford says, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. 
he was ahead of his time nowadays uh, we use a term in business called CI or continuous improvement because there's this belief that was really kind of founded in manufacturing with Toyota that we need to always be improving our process. <clears throat> that we we find efficiencies. We work together better when we're always refining our process. Now, all along through the organizational leadership framework, I've told you that the best leaders are the ones that are creating alignment in the organization, right? Alignment with them inside themselves, alignment with how they fit with their team, alignment with how the team fits inside the organization. And they're always looking to get everything aligned from the individual to the team to the organization. And this step will be no different. Many of you are working for small organizations. And many small organizations haven't figured this out because Oftentimes, it's this step right here in a business life cycle that takes them to the next level. And until they take this step seriously, they will always stay small because it's the process step that allows the small business to jump to medium business and the medium businesses to jump to large businesses. When you take process seriously, when you decide that you're going to codify the way of your organization, when it's done this, when the same way every single time. One of my favorite books, and it was super important in my entrepreneurial journey, I recommend it to everybody, it was The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. And Michael Gerber was talking about the entrepreneurial myth, how many people start a business because they're excellent at doing a certain task. Few people become a manager who can manage people to do the task. And even fewer people become entrepreneurs who know how to create a business for doing those tasks. And one of the things that Gerber, he does a case study on McDonald's. Nowadays, if he was writing it in 2024, he'd probably use, use Starbucks. Um, but he did a case study on McDonald's and showed how whether you got a hamburger in Los Angeles or you got a McDonald's burger in Kandahar, you would have the exact same experience because McDonald's had painstakingly codified a process that could be replicated over and over and over again. And it was predictable and it was repeatable. Well, to find success on your small team or in your large organization, it will not be any different for you. Sustainable success and next level results will come from you taking time to codifying your process and creating an organizational way that everyone is bought into and does the same way over and over and over again. And this, my friends, is the leader's job. Many leaders are hiring talented people onto their team and they think I'm going to allow that person to shape the organization. And they think the most loving thing they can do is to task the new hire to create the new process. Newsflash, that's often the exact opposite thing that you should do. I hope that you are hiring extremely talented people onto your team. But even talented people need to be shown the way. They need to be given a process on how you do things. Otherwise, they're likely either to spin their wheels or try to pull the company accidentally in the wrong direction. So let's talk about alignment for a second. And as always, I'm going to leave you with a, a tool, with an exercise that you can apply to your team and your company right now that I guarantee you will kickstart your ability to create a process and will help your understanding of where you fit in the global organization and, and how everyone starts to work together. So first things first, as we're thinking about process conceptually, I like to think about process like a set of gears and we're looking for alignment, right? So if you've ever seen the inside of an old fashioned clock or watch, there's a lots of sets of gears, small gears and large gears that are turning each other. And they have to be turning each other just right so that the teeth fit. And if something gets out of alignment in the process, the clock stops working, right? Same as with your team. 
And it's the leader's job to be looking for the processes and if they align together or not. And anyone can be a leader because anyone can look for these things. But the way I want you to think about it is you yourself have a process that turns. It's the gears. It's the things that you're personally responsible for, right? And so this is the individual. But you individual are not on an island alone. Unless you're a solopreneur, and you've heard me say that even solopreneurship is a myth, you are an individual inside of a greater team. And this team has gears that turn. And you turn together. And you must create alignment between your process and the team's process or everything will come to a screeching halt. Now, the larger the organization that you're on, you'll realize that your team process, it is, is even inside of a larger process, which could be a department, but it for certainly is the organization. And so if your individual process doesn't line up with the team process, then the gears will stop and they'll get jammed. And if the team process isn't lined up with the organizational process, then those gears will stop and everything will come to a screeching halt. So it's extremely important that all leaders at all times are trying to create this alignment because when we get these all to work together, you'll not only just find efficiencies, they'll start to multiply and they'll start to propel and push each other. And you'll start to get results that you couldn't have any other way. Now, I've told my team many times over that when something stops working right, when you're not getting the result that you're used to, when you hit a roadblock or something feels frustrating, most likely you've got a process problem. And most likely somewhere along the line, an individual or a team or the organization is out of alignment and there, an adjustment needs to be made. Now, what makes this even more complicated is you're an individual on a team, but that team <clears throat> isn't just you. Most likely, there's other people that are gears as well that are turning to turn that team. And you might be on a team of three or four or five, maybe up to 10 or 12, probably not any more than that on a working team. And if any one particular person on the team stops clicking with another individual or the team's process, you're going to see things get stuck or log jammed. So this is extremely critical that everyone on the team understands the team's process and how they fit in it so that we can all continue to work together and nothing gets stuck. Now, on, outside of being on a team, oftentimes we get really focused on what we're responsible for. We get really focused on what our team is producing, our team is doing. But the best organizational leaders, no matter what team they're on, they understand the context of their team and they understand that in the organization, there are other teams that make up the organization. You might be on the marketing department but the marketing department needs to know that they're affected by sales. And sales needs to know that they're affected by operations. And operations needs to understand how they fit with accounting. And even departments on completely different sides of the organization need to understand that they're dependent on each other. And if at any time any one of those teams begins to fall out of sync with the organization, it can bring the whole organization to a grinding halt. And though you think the administrative and accounting side of the business has nothing to do with sales or operations, you couldn't be further from the truth. And you'll figure that out one time when accounting or administration starts to have a problem and you wonder why you can't seem to close deals. You wonder why things aren't getting out the door on time or customers aren't calling you back. So the best leaders are organizational leaders because they understand that they are one person amongst a team of people 
that have to fit in a larger context of an organization. And an organization is normally made up of multiple teams, maybe multiple departments of multiple teams, that all have to create alignment. Now, everyone, as you've heard me say, is a leader no matter where you find yourself in the chain of command or on the org chart, you have the ability to be a leader. Because as Maxwell says, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And anyone that has the clarity of mind, and the courage and willing to take responsibility can look for the alignment in their organization and begin to create alignment and lead their team and lead their team into the organization, creating more alignment to get even better results. So I told you that I'd give you a tool, and, and it's this tool that will begin to help you assess the team that you're on. It will also help give you a context for where you fit in the team, where the fit team fits in the organization. And it's also the, the uh, exercise and strategy that I would recommend any new entrepreneur uh, or new team leader go through to help find success and create this alignment through a process. So, and it's what I call the life cycle or the life cycle exercise. And I was taught this by a fellow entrepreneur probably 15 years ago. It made a huge difference in one of my businesses. And I've used it with every new role that I have. Whether anyone knows it or not, when I get into a new role, join a new team, start a new company, I'm always doing the life cycle exercise so I understand the flow of the team I'm on and where it fits in the organization. And so in the life cycle, what you want to map out is you want to map out every single step of the process of the team that you're on. If you're the entrepreneur, you want to map out every step of the process of the business. So it might, if you're an entrepreneur, you're thinking how lead gen leads or, or marketing leads to sales, leads to operations, leads to accounting and compliance, and then HR. If you're on a team, you know that you have projects that you're responsible for. And the project starts one place and it finishes another. And there's all the steps along the way that have to be done, normally in some sort of sequential order, for there to be success. Now, what I've found through the years, this is really obvious, I know. But what I've found through the years is, is the, it's most of the time the most obvious conversations are not being had. And that's why teams aren't succeeding because everyone assumes that everyone on the team knows the life cycle so we don't talk about it i guarantee you this if you'll take time to map out the life cycle of your team and of your organization you'll realize that not everybody's on the same page and it'll start to be revelatory about why your results have never quite been what you thought was possible because what you think is step two to someone else's step four and someone else is doing step four in the order of step two and it's not until you map this out that you can find agreement and when everybody knows, yes, they go in this order. And now I understand why my step is so important because it leads to another step. And so normally this is a multi-step process, especially if you're starting organizational level and you move into teams. So if this was organizational level, I may be thinking in terms of departments. And inside of each department, I'm doing this again. I'm going to create another life cycle for each department. And each department is going to create another life cycle for the team. But if I'm doing this for the team, my, like my close team, I might think of the major steps that have to be done in what order. And then I'm going to list each micro task. Micro task. I'm serious. You want to list, list each micro task in each phase. And, and if there's a particular order to the micro task, then you need to uh, put them in that order. It's amazing what happens when you do this because then you begin to, you not only have the order, but it's also very clear to see who's responsible for what. So I've got a framework called the Project Management Framework that I don't have time to teach right now. You can find that in some previous episodes. 
But there's a seven step process on how to create a project from start to finish. And one of the steps in there is called assigning responsibilities. And so when you take the time to lay all this out, it's really easy for everyone on the team to assign responsibilities. You begin to put your name down next to each task. And so you know that each task is accounted for. But you also know <clears throat> if we're going through writing our name on things, I might put my name here and here and here and here and here. And let's say I'm really heavy here, right? And one of my other team members might come in and he might put his initials here and here and here and here and here. When I begin to map that out, then we're very clear about who's responsible for what, who's waiting on what, and who needs certain things to be done. So when I was, I was having this conversation um, with a friend the other day as I was laying this out to her, and she said, gosh, I wish this would have been, I wish they would have helped me and led me through this when I joined the organization I'm in now, because it took me months to really understand the context. Because she was given tasks to do, but she never understood where the tasks fit inside the organization. She didn't understand how important the tasks she was doing were for other departments and other steps. She was only doing it because she said she needed to, because she was told to. But at the point that she understood the context, so she started applying this to the team that she's on, it changed dramatically the way she saw the team and the ways that she saw the importance of the work she did and how it fit with everyone else. By doing this lifestyle exercise, she was able to start creating alignment for herself inside of her team. And undoubtedly, the team began to find a greater alignment through the organization. Don't skip over the basics. Sometimes they're the most important thing you can do. The best basketball players, whether it be Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, they never stopped practicing their free throws when they got really good. When they got really good and then became all pro in our world, they shot that many more free throws because they understood that it was the basics that laid the foundation for their entire game. And such is with your success. Most of the really successful people in the world it looks like they're doing very fancy and sophisticated things. But really, if you were to look closely at what they're, do, what they're doing, they're actually just applying the basics to a whole nother level, to a way that's almost unrecognizable. Because they understand that simple scales and fancy fails, and for, for every rung of the ladder that you want to climb, you've got to simplify. And they learn to apply the basics with greater proficiency, consistency, and determination. And such as this, when you become an organizational leader, you understand that you are not going to be able to outgrow your process. That growth will be a product of the process that you put in place because the process creates an environment for the people to come together to do something greater than themselves. And when you can create alignment for your team, then you can find a cooperation that makes new things possible. I hope you'll join me for the next three weeks as we continue on through the organizational leadership framework. Drop me a comment, drop me a like, hit me up with a DM. I'd love to know how applying this in your business and in your personal life is making changes. I've been hearing some great things from the folks that are interacting with me on the live Zoom calls. By the way, we shoot these episodes live on Thursdays, noon, Eastern Standard Time. Love for you to love to meet you, for you to join us live as we talk more about this and how we can apply this to great, get greater levels of increase. So God bless you. We'll see you next time for another episode of Increase.